In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, and we start off today with the entry antiphon. Six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest! Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who has an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue, so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me, they curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him, let him release him if this is his friend. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from St. Paul to the Philippines. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but he emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him a name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on the earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put to him this question, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's surprise and amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time an notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with this man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked him, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, But in that case, what am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and they collected the whole cohort round him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak and having twisted some thorns into a crown they put it on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him they knelt to him saying, Hail King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink, mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. And when they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and the other on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So you would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Then save yourself if you are God's son. Come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He puts his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah, and one of them quickly ran to get a sponge which he dipped in vinegar 
and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait! See if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus again, crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. Thank you for joining me today on this special occasion. Now today we begin Holy Week. In ancient times this was known as the Great Week. The passion narratives come to life as if enacted before our very eyes. Step by step we follow the path Christ trod during the last days of his mortal life. Like the people of Jerusalem, we too joyfully acclaim Christ as our King. He enters the holy city not as a warrior king with a great army, but as a humble and gentle Messiah, humble and riding on a donkey. The donkey was regarded as a beast of burden. Christ, as it were, does the donkey work for us. He takes upon himself the burden and guilt of our sins and carries them in his sacred passion. I think it is also worth noting that in ancient times it was customary for a king to ride on a donkey when on a mission of peace, whereas the horse carried the kings into battle. In this sense... Christ, the King, will bring peace to those who make a place for him in their hearts and follow him with humility. But peace will only be ours if, as subjects of his kingdom, we live by the truth. Jesus said to Pilate, All who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. Now, under ordinary circumstances, we would have begun this Sunday celebration with a palm procession, but these are not ordinary times. But this procession of palms is not just pageantry, because we must follow Christ with a lively devotion. Even today, the triumph of Easter is foreshadowed, the palm being an emblem of that victory, an emblem of that victory. The Apocalypse relates that the saints in heaven hold palm branches in their hands. So we don't just look back at a past event. The opening prayer of the Mass says it all. When our life on earth is over, may we follow Christ into the new and everlasting Jerusalem of heaven. The first reading from the book of Isaiah, written about 800 years before Christ, speaks about a mysterious suffering servant whose sufferings prefigure those of Christ. The humility of Christ in accepting insult and derision is underscored in the first and the second readings. It says, He did not cover his face against insult and spittle. He emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, the Gospel this year is the story of the Passion from Matthew. It never fails to make a deep impression. 
As we enter into the story, we can imagine ourselves on Mount Calvary, witnessing Christ's terrible suffering and death for us. The question is, the question we could all ask is, if I were on Calvary that day, what effect might it have on me? What would my reaction be to what was taking place that first Good Friday? The answer is pretty straightforward. Where do I stand now? If I am stuck in the rut of sin and I'm not doing anything about it, then I will certainly keep my distance from the cross of Jesus. It says that many people among the onlookers went home beating their breasts. Do I believe that my sins had a part to play in putting Jesus on the cross? Would I beat my breast and descend from the mountain a rather chastened man or woman? Does the message of Calvary find a real home in my heart? Or am I like most of the crowd that day, just there for the spectacle, but unmoved in any deep down sense? Or does the death of Christ out of love for humanity give meaning to my life on earth and prepare me for paradise, which is the real goal of my existence? These are indeed interesting questions for all of us to meditate on. God bless you all. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands for the good of whole, the good of all His holy Church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you, your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit.
us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And thank you all for taking part in this special Passion Sunday Mass with me. God bless you all. Oh.